Hey guys and welcome back to Meek Reaction Reviews, reaction reviews to things on the internet, same day, same shirt, different video. And today we're returning to Judge Judy. I think this is the second time she has graced this channel. Judge Judy is the kick-ass judge on her own show that's been around like since ancient times. And today she's going to be talking about why she doesn't consider herself a feminist. All right, so we're getting right into it, but before you do, if you like this type of videos, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon to notifications when I do upload. All of that really does help with the algorithm, guys. And if you'd like to support this channel even further, you can donate. My PayPal, my link is in the description box below and also in the comment section. Of course it helps, but you don't have to. You can just like, comment, subscribe. Another great way to support this channel is either join my brand new membership program, different levels, different tiers, different perks, or you can visit my brand new merch shop. Links down below and links to all the internet of platforms, my socials, all the ways to support me and all the ways to contact me for business is all in the links down below. Other than that, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. All right, here we go. And we are back now with the one and only Judy Steinlein, who show Judge Judy launched its 22nd season last September. Number one show, number one TV personality. Um, you've said, and I agree with you, one of the reasons your show is so successful is people love seeing a woman in control. And boy, is that a timely sentiment now. Um, and yet you, you said you never considered yourself a feminist. Why is that? And do you get the same kind of pushback in saying that that I, I do? Because I've said the same. I get pushback. You have to listen to it. You're younger. I don't listen to it because I'm old. <laughs> because when I was growing up and going to school and being a lawyer and trying to become a judge and becoming a judge and then becoming a supervising judge, I didn't through, do it through any organization. And I think it takes away from your own self-worth if you say, I, I did it based on the work of a larger group. Now, it's nice to have the... It's like having a large family, you know, family being uh, a safety net for you. It's nice to have a safety net. But if you don't have your own self-worth and forge forward yourself, that safety net, all it can do is give you the bottom. You have to push it through yourself. And I think that that's what makes me say, I'm really not a feminist, I'm an individualist. I think that individuals have, each have within themselves the capacity to be the hero of their own story. It doesn't, it doesn't always have to be a star of a television program to be the hero of your own story. You want to be a doctor, a lawyer, an Indian chief, whatever you want to be, you can be the best at it, be the most recognized in that profession or vocation, that makes you the hero of your story. That's right. You can be a burger flipper and be the best, best darn burger flipper great, they've ever be seen. Be a great family person, have, be a great parent, be a great child, be a great citizen, be a great volunteer. That can make you a hero. That, that, doesn't, take a, that doesn't take a village. That takes an individual spirit. And I think everybody has it within themselves to do that. What All right, stopping it there. I absolutely love what she said. I think it's absolutely true. And it always takes me back to that Russell Brand and Candace Owens uh, conversation, a clip that I upload that like went viral. And it's when Russell Brand is basically saying how much we need more sort of social support. The government should get more involved in people's lives to help the little guy to push up the oppressed or whatever, right? It's a tiny minority of people that are like you that come from a poor background and manage to overcome it. And this is what's a, pro a problem I've noticed with a lot of great people is they sort of believe that their greatness is something that can be replicated and I don't think it, it can. can. I see. So I believe in the individual, you don't. That's I our fundamental differences. But the primary goal of the individual should be to serve the community. I, I, I do not believe that the primary goal of what the individual... What do you think the primary I, I goal of the individual should be? I think that once an individual be, feels serve that they the individual. have served... So you're, you just, you're discounting the human spirit. I'm the not discounting yes, it. it. I'm saying that's all let there is. Let me... I love Russell Brand and he has been killing it lately but he is still a little like utopian sort of socialist. But anyway... <laughs> I love those hippies. But what Candace Owens was trying to say is like she believes in a human spirit. She believes in the individual. Like if they can, you know, basically pull up themselves by the bootstraps and if they put the work into it that they can achieve. But now we're living in society that from the moment you are born and conscious into this world, if you are a black or a person of color, if you grow up to be LGBTQ+, if you are a woman, if you are disabled or whatever, you're constantly being told 
oh, there's so many obstacles in your way. You'll never ever be able to achieve the same things that some sort of cis heteronormative white male can achieve. So you need all of us. You need us, you need the government, you need all these programs and these communities to help push you through instead of being like, no, you can do it. One of the things I love about Dr. Joy Peterson is when he talks about how his daughter, Michaela Peterson, if you know anything about their story, she was very, very, very sick. I believe she grew up with like some sort of like adolescent or a child rheumatoid arthritis and had all these like joint surgeries and she was just like genuinely actually physically ill and was along with that came with like mental illness like depression and stuff like that and he set his daughter down at a young age and said this sickness will never be your crutch you can never use your sickness as an excuse ever um my question is what would you say to someone who has been through a traumatic experience and wants to avoid the culture of victimhood that encourages people to identify with their trauma and capitalize off of being the most victimized um, person. The first, the first thing is, well, if you want to avoid that, you're sort of on the right path already, right? Because you have some vision of what it might be like not to be traumatized and not be a victim. Here you are, you, you have the ethnicity and race that was bestowed upon you. You had no choice in that. You're the victim and the beneficiary of this particular historical moment. When my daughter was young, she was very ill. But one of the things we told her was, don't use your illness as an excuse, right? Because you're already in trouble, kid. You know, you got your problems and it, they're serious. But if you can hold on to the distinction between the part of you that can, in spite of this, and the part that can't because of it, and not blur that distinction, then that's one more thing you have on your side while you're attempting to struggle through this. And to her credit, she managed that and quite pristinely, and that was extraordinarily helpful. It was very difficult. It was very hard to draw that line, right? Because in some sense, she'd been victimized by this arbitrary illness. And, you know, you, you tend as a parent to have an outpouring of empathy, the empathy that can destroy under those circumstances because you, you coddle the person more than is absolutely necessary, right? And you have every reason to because they're suffering like mad. But you want to be a victim and be a tragic figure? You know, and you might say yes, but you wouldn't if you thought it through. So it's the same thing as that like you can't use being a woman or being a black or being gay or being fat or being disabled as an excuse. I mean, unless you are literally like extremely mentally, physically blind, deaf and dumb strapped to a bed, you can figure it out, right? I'm, I uploaded a Dr. Joey Peterson short that I did and I think that it was a little bit all over the place, but my point I was trying to make in that video was um, when you finally get through those obstacles after failing and falling in your face multiple, multiple, multiple times and you get through it, it is some of, it's one of the best feelings in the world. And nobody can ever take that away from you. And that's how you build self-worth, self-love, self-confidence. That's how you build a sense of self. But I feel like in a society we're taking that away from people and that's why people rely on their labels, their birth labels, to build a sense of self instead of actually achieving anything. Because again, we live in a society that says not only do we need to build, like knock down every obstacle, we need to actually shield people from words because they're dangerous. That, that's how fragile they are simply because they were born black, a woman, female, gay, gay or, or trans or something like that. And so they have to rely on being black and proud or being a female and proud or being gay and proud instead of having pride of the things they've actually accomplished. And the best pride comes from when you really have to fucking fight hard to accomplish something. I don't necessarily believe there should be no social safety nets. And yes, if something is act like genuinely Un unequal when there's generally like uh, human oppression going on should we definitely step up and say something yes but I feel like in the states in the west as a whole that's not necessarily the case anymore on an individual level do people grow up and to be victimized yes but as a whole as a society as a system I don't believe that's the case anymore not in the United States and I'm with her I'm such an I'm individualist right I love community I think community is different from tribe tribalism and I've explained that in other videos and community is fine and I think community and being a part of community is healthy for you but you still have to stand as an individualist so you're not relying on other people's ideology and mentality and perspective to build up who you're supposed to be as a person and so it's sad that there are black students going to universities who have to complete their entire college uh, career not knowing whether they got there on their own merits 
or they got there through some sort of um, affirmative action or some sort of minority or diversity quota. That has to do something to someone's mentality and some sort of someone's confidence level. If an Asian person or a white person goes to university, they know they got there on their own merits and not because of the color of their skin or what's between their legs. It just does something to your confidence and to your self-worth. It really does. And a lot of these people who want everything bulldozed out of their way, every obstacle, every word shielded from their ears, they have such a weak sense of self and that's why they sort of scramble onto all these fucking labels to build some sort of identity. But anyway, that's enough. Let's continue. What do you make of the Me Too movement? I think it was necessary. I, I've, you know, come, being a part-time person who lived in California, I can tell you one thing. Harvey Weinstein never put a hit on me. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'm, speaking from, I'm speaking from a different perspective. As a young lawyer, I remember going into courtrooms and male, a couple of male judges saying, oh, you have great legs, or, and I don't, but you have great legs, that's a great looking suit. And I, what I said was, thank you. It didn't make me feel uncomfortable. Um, now it does, now it, it I think, that the Me Too movement is an important place to jump off, and I don't think it should infect the workplace so that men and women can't interact naturally with each other anymore. Uh, because I recall I do breaks at work where I have charity auction winners who come to the set. You know, we have you know, a day at the set, and we have lunch together for various charities. We do it once a week. And I was taking a picture with one of the men and I put my hand on his shoulder. <laughs> he looked at me, you know, we were sitting to take the picture. And I said, I would never have thought about that being inappropriate, mm -hmm. but for now. So I think that the Me Too movement is an important movement and I don't think it should be abused. Yeah. So, that's it. Yeah, because you can go too far to where you, you you diminish just normal human, human interaction, interaction and kindness. And I think men and women are trying to figure out where are those clear lines. Men are scared you know what list because they're worried about, you know, just a, somebody they might have hugged if, they, if she looked upset before. Now they're worried of what, what that's going to lead to. Hello today. All right, that's it. That was George Judy, another feminist. Um, I think she was trying to be really careful with the Me Too movement, but I do think she made her her, her point clear. Uh, it was a necessary thing, but like all things, it always goes too far. <laughs> and now, again, what she was saying, like natural human behavior and human interactions has become sort of this has become divisive basically boys don't know if they can even flirt with the girls anymore or give a girl a compliment anymore and there has been studies that have shown um or at least anecdotal stories have studies that have shown that in the workplace now it is becoming more divisive and now women it's actually hurting women in the workplace because now when there's like golf course re golf retreats or you know men going out to you know talk about deals and contracts a lot of women are being left out of it because they don't want to get caught in any, any me too situation or even if there's boardroom meetings or the boss wanting to come like bring a woman into his office just to talk about business now it's like oh, i now have to have another person in a room just in case something goes down and i know a lot of feminists would just say well why can't men just behave but again when you muddy what the lines are they don't even know what it is anymore like, like a man might look at her uh, weirdly or I might just make a gesture that she takes wrong or something like that because it's become so divisive and it's become so broad of what what me tuning is or what is inappropriate or not appropriate for, between men and women and personally like I'm pretty sure there were women in the workplace who got complimented and took it the wrong way all the time because they wanted to be seen more serious or taken more seriously but I also feel like a lot of women have been taught to be offended by things like they've been taught in universities or social media or their friend groups to be say hey you shouldn't take that compliment as a good thing because that was actually misogynist you know what I mean that guy opened a door for you he was actually treating you like a piece of shit he was actually treating you like a second class citizen he thinks you're so weak you can't open a door for yourself so we've been programmed to think things that are supposed to be nice is actually not okay it's not wrong or that it's wrong 
wrong. But anyway, guys, tell me what you think of this uh, Judge Judy clip. Do you identify as a feminist? Let me know in the comment section below. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell to get the notifications when I do upload. All of that really does help with the algorithm, guys. And if you'd like to support this channel any further, you can donate. My PayPal me link is in the description box below and also in the comment section. Of course, it helps so you don't have to. You, you can just like, comment, subscribe. Another great way to support this channel is either join my brand new membership program, different levels, different tiers, different perks, or visit my brand new merch shop. Links down below. I also have a second travel vlog channel. I travel as a lifestyle or I live abroad. If you'd like to know where I am in the world, you can go in the description box below and also in the comment section. Click the link, go subscribe to my travel vlog channel, and don't follow me on my travel Instagram. My stories is usually what's most up to date. And you guys have an amazing day.